Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 13th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. I met Kim and our friend Greg at the Braddock Bay East Spit around 7.15 a.m. So we were there in time for sunrise and it was a mostly cloudy morning with a really still lake and moderate southwesterly winds. There wasn't as much songbird migration as we had hoped for, but there was a good variety of ducks on the bay. Here we have two white-winged scoters. And here's a flock of canvas backs. And I should also say that when Kim and I had started to head back in to head over to the Hawkwatch, Greg stayed a few extra minutes and he was able to pick out the continuing Eurasian widgeon. We had a total of 41 species at the East Spit. I got over to the Hawkwatch around 9 a.m. and the clouds had moved out, leaving mostly blue skies, which were very difficult for spotting. But as we got into the afternoon, there was a bit of a thin cloud layer that moved in. Winds were moderate out of the southwest to start, eventually shifting around to a more westerly direction, but overall favorable conditions for migration, although the spotting was tough with those blue skies. Here's a pair of wood ducks with the male on the left and the female on the right, and notice how long the tails of wood ducks are. They're pretty long and squared off. We had a handful of killdeer migrating, although not as many as last time that we had southerly winds. Here we see a hawk with a long tail, so we should be thinking excipiter. You see somewhat rounded wingtips. And this one has a big head and we see brown teardrop streaking. So this is a juvenile cooper's hawk. Here we have a small bird that's mostly brown on top, but it has a distinctive black and yellow facial pattern. This is a horned lark. And this was part of a group of around 15 or 20 horned larks that came by. And I didn't really look that closely at them. I just grabbed my camera because I saw they were coming close and I was able to get shots of a few of them. But as they got past the other end of the platform, someone was able to pick out a Lapland long spur. So I didn't get to see it myself, but some others on the platform did get to see that. Here we have a hawk in a soar from the shape. We should be thinking Budio. And this has a very distinctive coloration with a lot of orange underneath and then a lot of black and white striping in the wings and tail. We see that there are translucent crescents here near the wingtips as well. And the wingtips look somewhat squared off or blunt and are made up of five feathers. So this is an adult red-shouldered hawk. And we had a really good red-shouldered hawk flight today with a total of 77 migrating. Here's another adult red-shouldered hawk. This one is in a glide posture, so the tail is a bit more closed and the wingtips are folded back. Here we have a large dark raptor with a lot of splotchy white underneath, especially in the wing pit area. This is a young bald eagle. This is actually a juvenile bald eagle. We see an even trailing edge to the wing and some light inner primary feathers. We see a really dark head and overall dark underside, although by this time of year, a lot of them are getting a little paler here on the breast and belly. Here we have a hawk that looks like a flying cross. We see a really long tail big head and long wings that are held straight out and we see brown teardrop streaking that's more heavily marked on the upper breast and not so much down lower this is another juvenile cooper's hawk and notice when the tail is completely folded like this it can look squared off rather than the more rounded appearance that you see when it fans its tail out a little bit remember the shape of the tail comes because the outer tail feathers are shorter on cooper's hawks than the central tail feathers this sandhill crane was one of the highlights of the day. Notice the really long straight neck and overall gray coloration. And you can maybe get a hint of that red cap. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings. So we should be thinking falcon. And we see a lot of dark streaking underneath. So this is a merlin. And we see that it has a feather out of place here. We had the first double crested cormorants of the season today. But we'll be seeing plenty more as we get further into the season. Here's another juvenile cooper's hawk, and if you look here, you see a bulge in this area, and this is a full crop, which is a sign that the bird has eaten recently. We saw this bald eagle multiple times throughout the day, and it was pretty distinctive with the missing feather in its left wing. You can see it's almost to adult plumage. It's got the white head and white tail, but still got a dark tip to the tail, and still some white scattered throughout the underside. So in another year or so, this should be in full adult plumage. Here's one of the raptor highlights of the day. So we see a Budio, but it has very long, lanky wings, and it's overall dark underneath, but we do see some white throughout the underside of the wings. This is a rough-legged hawk, and it's very similar to one that we saw yesterday. 
and looking at the same bird in the sore, we see those dark carpal squares. You see that it's overall dark here on the underside of the body, but it's more brownish in a lot of the areas of the wing here. So again, as I said yesterday with the dark rough legged hawks, it's usually the adult males are the ones that are really jet black and the juveniles and the females are more like this, sometimes called intermediate morphs, um, just not as pure dark. It's more of a mixtures of dark browns and lighter browns. Here's an adult bald eagle, and we had a pretty good eagle flight today with 25 migrating bald eagles. Here we have another hawk, and if we look in the shoulder area, we see dark patagial bars. We also see a very dark belly band, and the trailing edge to the wing is not the bold dark. It does have a little bit of dark to it, but we do not see a red tail. So this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk, and I would say this is on the more heavily marked end of the spectrum. Compare that to this bird where again we see dark patagial bars and a belly band, but this one does have the bold dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. So this is an adult red-tailed hawk. We had the best turkey vulture flight so far this season with 175 and they were coming through in small groups of up to around 10. Unfortunately, despite the high numbers today, a lot of the birds were really distant. That wind was pushing them towards the lake and a lot of them were high altitude. So not a very good day for getting photos most of the day. Here's an example of what you might see in a best case scenario on the high red shouldered hawks. So you can really see the patterning in the wings and tail. You see the translucent crescents as well. But I think there were a lot of people that came out today hoping to get good looks at hawks. And it was just a little disappointing in how far most of the views were. Here we have two raptors. So the one on the left is a hawk. And we see a lot of orange underneath as well as some black and white patterning in the tail and the wings. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. The bird on the right we see is kind of silver grayish on top, although with the sun reflecting off of it, it's hard to see the exact color. But we see a grayish tail and a white rump patch. So this is an adult male northern harrier. And this is the one that's been hanging out the past two days and doing territorial displays. So hopefully this bird sticks around and it would be great if we had nesting northern harriers in the marsh this season. We had a couple more tree swallows today, and tree swallows are the first swallows to return, and they're sort of a bluish green on top and white underneath. Here we have a large dark raptor high overhead. We see a really dark head and underside to the body, and a lot of white in the wing pit areas. This is a juvenile bald eagle. Here we see a raptor with a long tail and somewhat long pointed wings and we see an owl-like facial disc. So this is a northern harrier, and this is one of the brown type harriers, and we see a lot of streaking here on the upper breast. So this would be an adult female, maybe even a potential mate for our male that's hanging around the marsh. Here's a photo that may not be the best quality, but I can't think of something that would better represent the field marks of this species. So we see a bird with a relatively long tail and rounded wing tips, so we should be thinking occipiter. And look at this tail tip. That is a very straight, squared off tail tip. So we should be thinking sharp shinned hawk. Combine that with the relatively small head and the more rounded looking wings. A lot of times sharpies show a bit of a bulge here in the secondaries. Um, they just don't look as long and lanky as Cooper's hawks. So they look more compact, with these rounded bulging wings, small head, and very straight tip to the tail. This is just classic sharp shinned hawk. And we got to five o'clock, which would be the normal end time, but we were still seeing some hawks, especially high overhead. A couple of turkey vultures, bald eagles, red tails were still moving. So we said, let's stick it out a little bit longer. And I was glad that we did because this American kestrel made a very close pass to the platform and gave us excellent looks got that classic kestrel facial pattern to it and we can see this vertical streaking on the breast again that's vertical if it was perched up in front of us these this is a female american kestrel and one final look at an adult bald eagle and taking a look at the ebird checklist for the hawk watch today we had 60 species the new species for the season were wilson snipe and double crested cormorant as well as Lapland long spur that others had, but I did not include on my own list. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 175 turkey vultures, 25 bald eagles, and 7 northern harriers. For exhibitors, we had 3 sharp-shinned hawks and 14 cooper's hawks. 
For Beautios, we had 77 red-shouldered hawks, 71 red-tailed hawks, and one rough-legged hawk. And for Falcons, we had one American kestrel and two merlins, for a grand total of 376 migrating raptors today. That brings the March total to 760 and the season total to 918. With the favorable winds today, we had a lot of visitors, so it was great to see everyone out on the platform. And thank you to everyone who was able to help spot birds and contribute to the Hawk Watch today. We had one Hawk Watcher visit all the way from Toronto, and she was a big help at spotting the birds that were up really high. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly cloudy in the morning, then becoming cloudy with rain later in the day, high in the low 50s, and winds northeast at 5 to 10. So the winds are starting very light in the morning. We'll have some sunshine. Seems like it might be a decent morning to be out for songbirds. Um, not sure how good it will be for the raptor flight, but we might get a little bit in the morning. But as the day goes on and it clouds over and the winds become stronger out of the northeast, I would expect less raptor activity. For Friday, looking like morning showers and then partly cloudy with a high in the upper 40s. Winds north-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Not a very good wind for us, would only expect light migration. And for Saturday, a mix of sun and clouds and then cloudy later on. High in the upper 40s and winds west-southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So if the winds hold like that, it could be a decent day. My wind app was showing the possibility of a lake breeze, so we'll keep an eye on Saturday as we get closer. I know there's a field trip that'll be in the area, so hoping for good weather for them. And uh, yeah, hopefully Saturday turns out to be the next decent day, but I'll update you the next few days. All right, well, today was a really nice day to be out with the beautiful weather and favorable winds and big raptor flight, although it was a bit frustrating at times with the difficult spotting against that blue sky especially with the hawks being so high and distant. And there were a few birds that I would have liked to see that I never got eyeballs on myself. So difficult day out at the Hawk Watch, but we'll have better days soon, I hope, especially as we get more into the season, the numbers are going to continue to pick up and we'll have a lot more species arriving throughout the rest of the season. Next few days are looking a little iffy, but hopefully we'll have more good days soon. Hope you can visit us soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.